Chris Kins. <laughs> Shit, sorry. It's not the Uno, the Dose, the Trace, but it's the Quasso. to another episode of The Nerdy Effect. That is right, I am your host, Jizzy, as always, being as jiznificant as possible. Feeling a little extra jiznificant today. That is a new word to add to the hero's dictionary. Uh, hello, Duba Duba. Uh, what's going on Sunday? See, yes, it is live. It is live. Good to see you Sunday heat. Uh, heroes, DMK wants a Jizzy rant. Well, for some reason, my... Um, my host is not working, and I don't know why. I don't know why my host isn't working. It says that you guys host me, but it didn't tell me who, when, why, what, or how, and I'm going to have to get to the bottom of that. Uh, uh, no, no, whatever the word I said before. Uh, <laughs> sup, peeps, up, trans? How you doing, trans? Good to see you. Uh, dooba 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 No, you know, I can't really do the whole pause thing because these uh, animated things over on the side, they do that. Uh, okay, then what's good? No, no, it's just, uh, you know, we do the same old entrance and stuff. Usually, unless it's, you know, pre-recorded or whatever, we really don't do the entrance for like, uh, I guess we do because everything has an entrance on there. Never mind. I take that back. Good to see you, Sunday Heat. Did you get anything good done this weekend? Did you get any uh, cool stuff uh, hunted down? Let's see here, uh, candy grab for nerdy, candy grab for nerdy, candy grab for nerdy like candy. <laughs> hey, Duba Duba. Uh, someone say pause. Meow, fizz kids up in here. Uh, that's right, that's right, DMK. Good to see you, man. So, what did you guys do this weekend? I'm very curious. I'm curious like a cat. That's why my friends call me Whiskers. I'm very curious. What did you guys do? Hey, see, see, look at this, look at this. Uh, it is, um, uh, Herm One Monster, Her 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 Hormone Monster, the Hormone Monster, 
Oh, man. I watched a little bit of that show on Netflix. Oh, damn it. What is it called? Oh, I can't think of what it's called. Mm. You fracked my brain already, man. Knock, knock. Guess who? It's me, the Hormone Monster. Ah, oh, what is the name of that show? I, I watched a couple... Big Mouth, thank you. I watched a couple of episodes of it, and it it's not bad. It's kind of cool, you know, it's kind of relatable, at least for, you know, a little bit. But, damn, what a great name. That's awesome you were able to lock that name down. Like, I mean, you must have saw the show and been like, boom, that is a perfect name to go on Twitch and just walk around and be like, hey, guess what, you're about to get a boner, bro. Uh, Dan, uh, I tried Shadow of the Tomb Raider and, 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 uh, tried to say hallelujah, say hallelujah, say hallelujah, hallelujah, say hallelujah, say hallelujah, say hallelujah, hallelujah. I appreciate that. I know I'm shocked. I made this like two days ago. No way. No freaking way. That thing's been out for like six, seven months. It's been out a long time. I've been going around giving sexual advice. Bring it on, man. Come on, bring it on. Bring it on. I'm very curious. I love the name. I love what you're doing here. I keep keep doing this. Keep doing this. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I tried the rest this weekend. I'm stressed this time again. Not sure I appreciate uh, the rest, or I'm annoyed by the contrast. It's okay, Fizz. It's all right. Sometimes in life, it gets a little mm, sketchy, and it's okay to be frustrated with things. Uh, so it's all right. Just sit back and try to have a little fun tonight. Uh, it was great. Okay, cool. Hey, Dooby Dooby, the last thing I got from the con, but some mail coming this week. Ooh, cool, cool, cool. That's awesome that you made it like two damn weeks ago and nobody thought about it. See, that shows the genius right there. Uh, I got weekends off for the next month. Downside is I get to miss Tuesdays and Wednesday wrestling. Oh, damn it. That sucks, man. But, you know, that's what the replays are all about. Uh, I believe that is a vape train. All right. <laughs> hey, I nailed it that time. I got my se seasonal wizard. It's Paragon 170 something. Awesome. Uh, hey, LED, boom, indeed. Uh, don't make a glory hole in a wooden board. Make sure, make it, <laughs> wait, sure it may feel good, but dick splinters. You need to add bro to the end of that. Dick splinters, bro. Dick splinters. I like the name, man. No name, what's the money maker? 254. How you doing, money maker? Great to see you, buddy. Uh, hey, money maker. Hey, money, hey, money, money, money. Yo, nerdy, everyone, boom. Uh, suck an LED toot toot. <laughs> Uh, if you guys don't know, the Hormone Monster has joined us today, and what that means is he's about to spread a whole lot of sexual advice, and most of you should probably write that down. I'm looking at Dan Frode. I'm damn sure looking at Jay Duba Duba. Uh, Ali D, no, you're good. Don't listen to anything. Trance, you're good. DMK, listen to what Hormone Monster has to say. Heroes, pick and choose. Like You don't have to listen to everything like uh, like Jay Duba Duba does, but I mean, like if, if he says something like dick splinters, you should probably apply that to everything. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> hey, there you go. Good to see you, Red Walrus. Let's see what the, uh, it's all about that lace, about that lace, no human. Uh, are you the puberty fairy? Uh, wait, what the hell is on the top screen above the chat? Uh, oh, this is my new robot, and what it does is he welcomes people to the chat. I, I think it has to be brand new people, though. I don't think that he does it for everybody. Like, he said hello to the hormone monster. I, I also wait, I also go by Maurice. Don't call me the puberty fairy, though. I mean, I fuck with guys. Doesn't make me a fairy. <laughs> oh, shit, that's great. Uh, well, Nanny, what'd you go to the weekend? Uh, yeah, on Saturday, I... Saturday, yes. On Saturday, I talked about a couple things that I got at the flea market that weren't nerd-related. So that episode is archived over on YouTube. And over there, if you want to go watch the stuff that's non-nerd-related, that's where it's at. Tonight, we're going to talk about the nerd-related stuff that I did get at the flea market. So buckle up. Uh, like always, I'll tell you what I paid for it and how I haggled and things like that. Uh, Heroes Dooba Dooba Danny, yo. Yes, outside of this context, that sentence would not make sense to anybody. Heroes Dooba Dooba Danny, yo. I mean, seriously, it sounds like you bash Fred Flintstone on the head with a dinosaur tail. Heroes, we have a Dooba Dooba Do. Uh, two, number two, I can. Ooh, yes. Uh, don't look at me, brah. See, there you go. 
show us flea market nerd stuff. I will. Any sexual questions you can ask me. Well, I mean, I'm pretty much caught up on all my sexual questions. I mean, I'll, you know what? I'll tell you what, Hormone Monster. I do have one question for you, and it is, does my shirt make you horny? Does it make you horny? Uh, answer accordingly, and uh, that applies to everybody, not just Hormone Monster. Uh, I've been playing the new Spider-Man game. It's awesome. Yeah, that's what I've heard from everybody. Solo on the way to the post, hoping he's handsome or a riot. Damn. Uh, looking at you, Dooba Dooba. <laughs> Eyes on ya. A couple of you in here will notice that you have a little tiny square next to your name. And what that is, that is Robert Allen Baker right there. And that is a sub badge. And if you have been subbing for three months or longer you automatically get the Robert Allen Baker. And once we get it done, and I'll tell you who, um, once we get it done, um, the one to three months sub will be um, No Neck. So that is pretty much for um, mainly Fizz Kid, but anybody else who watches the show. Dan, you stop it. Yes, yes, Dan's on the top of it. Hero's mom in a half shell. Hero powers. Uh, I know that flag. No, you don't. Hi, trans. Ooh, awesome power reference. Nice, bro. And everything makes me horny. I'm the hormone monster. Eh, I, I kind of caught myself in a weird lie right there. So, you're right. But you're also the only one that has the balls to answer about the shirt. So, double win for you. I mean, I guess I just assumed the gender of the hormone monster. You could possibly be female. Dropping them hormones like the... Um, Salt Bay, just just falling down the forearm, just sprinkling all over. Gen I don't know. <laughs> all right, moving on. Uh, what's going on, Joker? How you doing, buddy? Welcome back. Great to see you. How you been? All right, so let's talk about what we got at the flea market. I went to the flea market this Friday because I had the day off, and I just wandered around by myself. It's always a good thing when you have a pocket full of cash and nothing to do but spend it. Uh, sleepover. I'm a guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you fuck with dudes. I got you. Uh, been dead broke since last November, hoping to change and might be able to sub in the future. All right. Uh, the show has a hormone monster, too. Monstrous. Oh, sweet. Um, so, Bojack Horseman, fucking women, food for thought. What? Um, <laughs> it's for teen girls. Ooh. Uh, cool shirt. Wouldn't want to be trapped in an elevator with some teens with it on. Hey. You know what? Sometimes uh, random things happen. Uh, all right. So one of the booths that I walked up to, this dude had no toys at all and nothing even toy related. It was like half farm equipment. You know, he had like uh, something that gets pulled behind a tractor and some old, you know, digging trowels and just random stuff. And then on the table, he had this, this Mega Man X or Mega Man 10 statue. And it's a figure art statue. And it just did not make sense. There was no reason for this to be on that guy's table. Not, not one bit. I have no idea how he came across it, why he has it. No clue. Not one solid clue, right? So me walking into his booth, and this, this was towards the front of the booth, right? So I'm walking in, and I see it automatically. But knowing the dealer, trader, haggler guy that I am, I know you don't go directly for it. You show as less interest as possible. That way they're kind of like, oh, well, whatever, you know. And when I go to these flea markets and stuff like that, I don't dress like a nerd. I don't wear a Captain America or a Batman shirt or anything like that. I wear strictly, you know, like a black T-shirt or a white T-shirt or whatever. Non-denominations, Okay. So I walk in and I see it or whatever, and I just keep on walking around and I pick up, you know, a John Deere license plate and I'm like, oh, that looks um, new, you know? So I move around and I come back to this and the dude has a $10 sticker on it right there. 10 whole doll hairs. Um, has, a, has a $10 sticker on it and I'm like, I pick it up, I look at it, you know, the box is not in the greatest condition. You know, I'm looking at it like, ah, oh, it's kind of dented here. Like, eh, and I go, would you take $5? <laughs> the dude looks at me and he goes, this old dude, like like late 60s, he's like, Oh, you're coming back for more? Well, the fish stick says, bring it! Ah, thank you so much, Lethal. I appreciate that. Uh, Sigma, Mega Man's amazing. She's my first time. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, spaceships, a few mammoths blush. Ooh, you have to, you have it. It's now, that's why. What? 
Uh, T-shirt makes me horny. Wait, what? Yes, you misspelled horny. Ah, maybe. I uh, appreciate the hell out of that, Lethal. I really appreciate it. And now Lethal has the official Robert Allen Baker badge. Robert Allen Baker badge. Uh, thank you so much for those Wanda's LED. You're amazing, man. Uh, Mr. One-Eyed tries a snake. Nice t-shirt. Give me a spin, bro. Hang on. I will. Just hold out. Uh, classic. Gonna be rubbish. I I tend to agree with you, sadly. So, so I said, would you take $5 for it? And he looks at me and looks at it and looks at me and looks at it. And, and I go... I mean, the box is kind of crushed, you know? And he goes, well, it's, it's worth more. And I go, yeah, but it, I'm here and I have cash. Tell you what, I'll give you six bucks for it right now. And he goes, okay. Like, I just defeated this old man. Like, he's, he's got this booth filled with stuff. And I'm like, I'll give you six bucks for this Mega Man X statue. And he's like, okay. So I handed him six dollars, turned around, and walked out of his damn uh, John Deere tractor pull booth, you know, with this with this damn statue in tow. So I, I couldn't pass it up. I couldn't pass it up. The fact is, is that and I'll say it all the time that these people who come to the flea market or anything like that, they do not want to take this stuff home. They bring it here to sell. Cash is easy to pack. You know what's not easy to pack? This giant Mega Man box, especially when your expertise is in toys. Your expertise is, you know, like a cattle prod or something. So the dude was willing to bargain. I paid six dollars for this, even without the box. It's worth at least fifteen. Sixty-nine wanders. You can look at my hooves. <laughs> Only six bucks. Great find. Yeah, isn't it? Uh, kind of a dick move. You're right. 100% it is. But again, if they didn't want to, they didn't have to accept my offer. The fact that they accepted it means that I probably could have offered like four and knocked it up to five. Uh, Jizzy leveled up beating some old man booth boss. <laughs> Uh, Dan, those cattle prods are expensive. Don't talk about them like that, right? Let's see here. What's going on, Twisted? I saw you earlier, man. I apologize for not saying hi, man. Uh, let's see here. I'd be the worst one to try and haggle with. <laughs> I'd be like, let's see the sticker. Yeah. See, that's another problem I have is because eBay is so damn big now is that people will look this up on eBay. They'll be like, well, I mean, this is going for like, there was a, this was like three years, two, three years ago. I was at a completely different flea market and this dude had a WCW like, I mean, it was like this damn big of a talking Randy Savage doll, like in the red nwo logos right and it was awesome i was like this is so sweet he had 25 dollars on it and the box was all faded you know because he puts it in direct sunlight because the toy doesn't give a damn about it things like that and i said man i will give you 10 for it right now he goes on ebay it's worth at least 30 you know and i've got to knock down five i go yeah but it's sun beaten who knows if it even works you let it get rained on if a cloud comes near you know there's a lot of if ands or buttholes about it so the thing is, they don't want to pack this stuff up, and they use that eBay technique. And what I say is, I'm here, I've got cash, and you don't have to take it home. So six whole dollars, and I got myself a Mega Man X uh, statue. And if we got enough time tonight, I will probably open this because, like I said, the box is trashed. Sorry, I missed your comments. Boom! Uh, what is going on, little French lady? Twisted. Uh, you did him a favor, but also ten isn't a lot. You're right. You're right. Uh, little French lady, Duba eBay fits on my tablet just fine. It's not too huge, but up. Uh, uh, here's some advice. Don't haggle with a hooker. The price you pay will seriously affect the performance and experience. Oh, you want to give a gift? Well, the fish stick has got a gift for you. It's called the Tata Sauce Special. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. I think that's the very first gift that's been given with the uh, fish stick gift. That is amazing, Size Vegas. Oh, dude, that is amazing. Like, uh, the Hormone Monster really gave pure advice right there. Because if a hooker walks up to you and she's like, hey, 100 bucks, you're like, how about 75? You know it's not going to be as good as that $100. Uh, you can get good deals for model trains on eBay. Awesome. Yeah, that's probably true. I have nowhere to put a model train. Uh, Multiverse his Fizz hates being direct sunlight. <laughs> $6 bought a $50 statue. Wow. Want to move in? I'm not even done, dude. That's the first nerd item that I'm even going to talk about tonight. And we still got a lot more to go. 
Uh, Dr. Jekyll, you are an amazing bitch for giving that gift to Fizz Kid. Um, Fizz Kid, you can now, um, since you do, you're now technically subbed, you can now throw out the nerd circles if you do have a tablet and can log into Twitch. It doesn't work between the, uh, PlayStation, though. And, uh, it has been a long time, but we gotta do this intro just right. Believe me, man, it's been a while since you've been here, but I will never, ever forget Mr. Ashes Divide! Damn, it's good to see you, buddy. Uh, spinning time soon. You're right, Mr. One-Eyed Trouser Snake. I forgot. I kicked uh, something. <laughs> Uh, I got you, buddy. I got you, buddy. Long time since we saw Ashes. It has... Well, I actually saw Ashes in... Um, oh, she changed her name so many damn times. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I feel so bad. I cannot think of what... Um, damn it! Anyway, Ashes, we've, we've talked recently. Uh, let's see here. Can I see how I'm going to die, or at least the way I want to? Uh, you'll, you'll probably just get passed on, you know? Like a weird cold. Uh, Dan with the flaming nerd and the cheesy poof boom. Let's see here. Do you do you still get any Lego stuff? Uh, it is rare that I get Lego stuff. The main thing is, is that Lego never loses its value. So if you find something Lego at a flea market, chances are you'll be unable to talk them down because Lego really never loses value. I do have some Lego stuff, but it's like in there. Let's see here. I want to die fighting off Sylvester Stallone with a bunch of other porn stars saving two teenage boys from a porn from the pornscape? What's a pornscape? I all right, I asked the wrong damn question, but it is out there and I must know. Uh, oh, what is going on, Mega Nasty? Queen Heartbreak. Yes, that's right, that's right. I I I, I don't get out as much as I used to. Uh, but yes, of course, of course. Uh, Mega Nasty, how you doing, girly pants? Great to see you. Always good to see you. Hopefully, you're gonna start streaming a little bit more and more and more and more than uh, than you've been. Uh, the pornscape is a dimension the teenage boys gets lost into, and they jerk off too much. I like I said, I only watched a little bit of that show. I never got like really. I think I've watched two, something like that. I never picked it back up. Did you get the Batman damned? Wait. Did you get that Batman Damned comic? Oh no, I didn't. I, th does that, I think that comes out this week and not last week. Um, <laughs> every fetish is there. R.I.P. Telltale. Yeah, when I when I first heard that people were getting laid off, I saw this update on Twitter. People were saying like, I work so hard at Telltale and things like that, and it made me kind of sad because I was like, well, maybe they're just you know laying people off for a little bit before they pick back up. But, I mean, Telltale Games is gone. It's done. They, they're closing the doors. They're not going to open back up. And this looks like a lot of people are gonna even going to pick up the titles that they've been doing. And it's really sad because one of the best games that I have ever played story-wise is the Walking Dead Season 1 Telltale Games. Now, granted, I played the POS Back to the Future game, which was a mind F. But the Telltale Walking Dead Season 1, I mean, that is one of the stories that will always live with me because it was so damn good. And to hear a company that can produce decent quality games, like the Game of Thrones one, now it's a, it's a point and click one, but for the most part, you don't have to worry about that. You just sort of follow along. It's not as hard as the Back to the Future one. But yeah, it just makes me so damn sad that they did. I'm too tired to stream. Oh, I feel you on that one. Whoop, whoop, Super Chica. Whoop, whoop, Super Chica. Whoop, whoop, Blonde Hair Flow. Um, I did a documentary on David Attenborough <laughs> uh, uh, Heroes Translate. Uh, we call it the Spank Bank back in the day, or, or the Tube Sock, one of the two. Uh, it's called Jerk Planet. It's on the BP. No, oh, damn it. Uh, sorry, guys. I'm going to have to head off. Got nothing but hostile negativity coming out my brain. It's not just me. Nice snoozy woozies. Fizz kid. Oh. <laughs> you got to wait Thank for it. Thank you so much for your donation. There it is. <laughs> Uh, Fizz Kid, you know, if you just want to, like, put the controller down and just, you know, watch and listen, you don't have to worry about it. Um, but Fizz Kid, if you are going away, have a good sleep, buddy. It's always good to see you. And, uh, tomorrow will be a better day. Uh, Super Chica, yes, Super Chica, I appreciate those damn Wanda's fucking lethal. Uh, what flag is the show tonight? Uh, no, Red Walrus said that he knew, so Red Walrus gets to tell the world. Thank you so much for your donation. 
<laughs> Spam. Uh, press my nipple as a start button. Boop. There you go. Hopefully you felt that. Telltale's going bust. Yeah, Telltale Games is, they're down to I, like very few people. And what they're doing is they're just finishing off the very current projects. Like episode two of season three of The Walking Dead. And the way it sits is you're not going to get the rest of the episodes to finish off uh, Clementine's story. Like, that is how quick that they are shutting it down. It's crazy. Um, let's see here. A uh, little French lady. Bad news. Henry Lincoln was supposed to come to the Hamilton Comic Con two weeks, but he canceled. I so wanted to get my selfie with the Fonz. Well, the thing is, sometimes they do cancel, and then they try to make it up to them the next year and come back. I know that there was a con about four years ago that was... I think it was in Austin and um, we went there and he was there like he, he like did a ribbon ceremony and stuff like that and I still didn't get my picture with the Fonz Wakanda fl <laughs> yes 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 15 no giphy but might as well get rid of the rest of these show boobs wrong show uh, I quote my lines and make up a lot. But, hey, you know what? Like I said you're doing fantastic especially for only a two week old name I say right oh 69 Wanda's. <laughs> you can look at my hooves. I appreciate that, Ali D, you dirty bastard. Uh, but yeah, Horvo Moss, I think you're doing fantastic. Hosting. Oh, hey, there's a host. There it is. Uh, what's going on, Mrs. Freddy? I don't know why it doesn't say in my chat who the hell hosted. Before that big update, it always did, and now it's not, and I don't know why. Oh, you're coming back for more! Well, the fish stick says, bring it! <laughs> English beauty, damn it! You don't have to come in here and subscribe to this show. Just you walking in with the beauty presence is enough to make all the men fall at your feet. Uh, but thank you so much for all that. <laughs> Wakanda forever. Hosted. Damn it, another hosted English beauty. Um, ooh, Wakanda, I remember my time there. It was in 2016. There was a civil war. T'Challa gave me a vibranium penis. <laughs> like, look, straight out of context, you need to go into a completely different stream and put that sentence into it. Like, you don't need to have some people talking about Black Panther or anything like that. Just go there. Damn it! Posted. <laughs> Super Chica. You need to just go in there and just throw that sentence out there. Uh, he, 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 yes, um, I'm getting eggnog tonight. It's too damn early for eggnog, and you know damn well. Me and the wife got a pick with the Fonz this summer. He's a great dude. I was trying to be quiet. It's impossible for you to be quiet. You sneak in. You're always wearing high heels for some reason. Gravity is my mortal enemy. I don't need any extra help. New Brunswick flag. Just saying, don't be Googling. Uh, Herman Tandy, what's going on, man? Your room is like a candy shop to me. Herman Tandy, welcome to the Nerdy Effect. It is great to see you, my man. I've heard you speak many a times, but I have not seen you in the show. So welcome to addiction speaking of addiction we've got to get back to talking about stuff that i picked up at the flea market walmart is selling eggnog it doesn't mean you pick it up they're also selling you know um like valentine's decorations at the end of december it doesn't mean it's time to start decorating all right so what else did i pick up i was walking along i went inside of a booth a booth and this is another one of these cases kind of like the uh, Mega Man x figure i walk into it and um it's like records and antique chairs and fire hydrants and stuff stuff that doesn't matter and then there is this sitting on one of the chairs and i'm like okay this is from 1981 milton bradley smurfs game right so i look at it and i pick it up and this is what it looks like it actually becomes a 3d world for you to play with the smurfs Feels bad, man. Why? Uh, so here, I might do that. I might also add my line about getting fisted by Thanos and then play with Infinity Stone. Actually, there's the gauntlet right there. So yeah, you can use it. Uh, damn, I get a flag right and Google it, but everyone else gets a congrats. Damn. <laughs> it's too early for Christmas crap. See? See? Even Super Chica gets it, and she's like half... half uh, gl Never mind. I'm not going to go down there. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> uh, lethal Infinity Stones. Um, it's a pirate ship flag. Yar. No, it's not. Feels bad, man. Don't be feeling bad, man. Heroes. Nice. Oh, my God. Love. Oh, my God. Awesome. 20 bitties from Freddy's Ready. Good to see you, man. I played the Smurfs back then. I bet you did, Sea Chicken. I, I can see you dressing up for one like Halloween. Uh, ooh, there's the fist monster. Does it smell like me? Uh, it does smell a little like shame. 
So yeah, I picked up the Smurfs game, and this dude had a $5 sticker on it. He had this little post-it note, $5 sticker. And so, I, <laughs> this is the asshole in me. Okay, this is a game from 1981. He has five bucks on it. You know, the box is in pretty decent shape, and I go, are all the pieces there? <laughs> and the guy says, does it matter? It's $5. The box is worth $5. And I said, you're right, and handed him five damn dollars and walked out of the booth. But he kind of played the mind game back with me, which is what I like. I want to haggle. I want them to come back with something. Don't just give in at the first damn opportunity. Don't let me say five bucks on a Mega Man X figure, and you go, okay, sure, and go back to selling John Deere parts. Like, he had five bucks on it. He's right. The freaking box is worth five damn dollars for a 1981 Smurfs game. So, I know what you're all wondering. Is it complete? And the answer is almost. It is so close to being complete. Uh, let's see here. No, no, finish, please. Uh, did, did I smurf? It was going to talk about you having a sparkly vagina. Uh, <laughs> Did I smurf? It was kinky smurf. Surprisingly pretty good. Oh yeah. Sorry for popping in and out with stupid weather. English beauty. I know you got a job to do. It is always fantastic seeing you. If you got to pop back in and out, it's all good. Um, what the smurf in hell? Did you mother effing smurfing butthole? Uh, it smells like shame. Guess it must have fixed the machine gun Kelly. Damn. Damn. Shots fired. Uh, been like, yeah, it matters and walked off. <laughs> Shaking your head. Yeah. S <laughs> SMH, which stands for sex might help. Uh, so yeah, is this complete? I didn't know, and I was damn sure not gonna break it open inside the booth and start counting. Um, it is almost complete. One of the pieces that it's missing is one of the stands that the Smurf figures actually stand on. It's missing the red stand, right? But all four Smurf characters are included. It has all the uh, dice and all the standable pieces. The only thing that's missing other than that one stand is two of these little strawberry patches. That's it. It's supposed to have 32 of them. It has 30 of them. I'm missing one stand. To me, that is five damn dollars well spent on a Smurfs game. So yeah, there we go. I didn't want to haggle. The dude got me. He's backed me in the corner. I'm like, yep, this is where I like it. We're good to go. Uh, Eminem, a rap god, MG Kelly, a rap devil, I'm the rap monster. I'll take them both on, uh, <laughs> wow, that is, uh, doesn't quite rhyme, but I can see where you're going with it. If you want to try to, try to bust a rhyme, then go for it. Bust a rhymes. Mm. So yeah, right there, that's $11 in two items. So that's not too damn bad, at least to me. All right, so I'm going to save that one for probably last. There is a booth at... I, don't, I, don't, I wasn't rapping. I know. There is a booth at this flea market, and there like I don't go every time or even... Hell, I didn't even go last year, or maybe once. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, they sell video games. Like, that's all they sell. They sell video games, video game consoles, and things like that. And that is all they sell, which is kind of cool. The problem is that they know the value. There is pretty much zero haggling like you walk up it says hey this is a playstation 2 game it is two dollars and fifty cents or it is five dollars and that's it you buy two games it is two for ten and you're good to go right uh plugs in phone charger uh-oh like into me or into the smurfs game so there's not a lot of haggling so i'm looking around and i pick up this one and i paid two dollars and fifty cents for playstations 2s TNA Impact Total, non-stop action wrestling. I actually played this game in the past. I don't think I ever bought it. I think I probably rented it. But I remember playing it, and I remember actually watching TNA back in the day. Like, this is... this is. I, I, I thought TNA was groundbreaking and awesome. And in its first probably five so years, it was really, really good. And then they started getting in the big names. And I hate to start throwing it out, but Hulk Hogan... Ric Flair, Kurt Angle, Scott Hall, those big giant names, all that does is mess up the raw amazing talent that this roster has built up on. Now, Jeff Jarrett helped started it, but when you talk about the analogs of wrestling history, Jeff Jarrett is nowhere near the top. 
Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan, those kind of guys there at the top. And when they start coming in, they demand a higher paycheck. And so the amazing guys that are doing the top level wrestling get pushed down a card so that you can get Hulk Hogan on there for more TV time. And that truly was the demise of TNA. That's why it's like global impact or something now, something ridiculous. And again, that's also another reason why WCW folded because WCW had no capital on their topping. It was basically, let's get this guy in here. Oh, you want $9 million to show up one time? Here you go. No problem. I'm Ted Turner. Look at my mustache. And TNA was perfect in the beginning. They had a couple of big names. They had like, you know, D'Lo Brown and uh, Christian, you know, just to sort of, you know, get people to watch. But then you had your top guys like Amazing Red, Christopher Daniels, AJ Styles, Samoa Joe. You had these guys that are just now getting big in WWF, but they were actually the forefront guys paving the way on TNA. So, and Sting, that's another one that, that's on, it's how he's even on the damn cover. But yeah, that, that's really the demise of TNA is getting these big names in it. I mean, you kind of need some, but when you get so damn many in there, it just becomes stale, stagnant stuff. And you get it over and over again because, you know, Sting is not going to do the same moves that AJ Styles is. Anyway, we can talk about this all night. Phone almost died. Uh, I do all my wrapping a few days before Christmas. Me too, mainly with newspaper. Uh, I'm going to go tell some jerk off in the school bathroom, climax in the thin toilet paper. Don't do that. Don't do that. This chat is pretty good. I may have to return. Uh, and much like my sex, you'll never see me coming. Hormone Monster, I appreciate you stopping by. I really do. Um, it is fantastic to see your name. I like what you do here. Uh, spread your hormonish join us over around Twitch. I'd love to be in a channel and all of a sudden you pop in there with some Wakanda facts or something. It'd be great. So anyway. There's my tiny little rant on TNA, but I figure for $2.50, I can 100% buy this game. So, not to be knocked out of a deal, it was, you know, two for $5. I had to go for it. Mexican and Japanese wrestling is my favorite. Hosted. Ooh, fatality, you dirty bastard. Uh, Mazel Tov. Mazel Tov, indeed. Psh, breaks bottle. Um, but I, I agree with you. I mean, Japanese wrestling is like... I'm trying to think of the right word it is not professional but it is sacred in japan like you go to japan and you're the underdog no matter what you have to earn your respect it doesn't matter how much you're paid you have to earn it by the crowd the crowd doesn't say oh there's chris jericho no chris jericho has to earn it in japan aj styles has to earn it in japan so i kind of fail you on that one uh, nice Venom trailer before I can watch Nerdy. Go get it, baby. Hugging the Nerdy effect. Fatality. Good to see you, man. So the other one that I picked up for the same price, two for five, which was a game that I swear, I mean, I know I have this. I must have loaned it to somebody and then they never gave it back and I was not keeping track of it because the other night, Mr. Homebody was playing on um, his channel and he was playing Need for Speed. And I told him that Need for Speed Carbon was one of the best games. It's actually one of my all-time favorite games ever in the history of ever. And I wanted to take a picture and put it on Instagram. And I went through my whole collection and could not freaking find it. So my thought is, is that I let somebody borrow it. And then they never gave it back. This is before the collection got to the magnitude that it is. And I just haven't seen it in a while. So I had to re-buy back PlayStation 2's Need for Speed Carbon. This is a game that I have to own, I have to have. I love what they did in this game. It is just, it's tops. Hey, Fatality, yes. Uh, it's tops for me. I The story, everything about it just works so perfectly. So for $2.50, I got a piece of my collection back. My new collection back. So anyway, so yeah, two for $5. Pretty easy, pretty standard. Uh, Chica, don't be hugging Chica, Fatality. You calm the hell down. Uh, steps on glass, cuffs, ow, ow, why would they do this? Why am I not wearing shoes? <laughs> I swear, if that joke is not in the show and you just came up with that, brilliant, my man, brilliant. Get up, boo. I know, Mr. T. I pity the boo. I know. So I showed this on fr uh, Saturday show um, because Retro Mortis was in here, but I figure I'll show it again for everybody else who wasn't here. You feeling better? No. Uh, but I, but I do enjoy my shirt. If you look at my profile, my PFP is the hormone monster. Uh, it's in the show, sadly. Ah, damn it. Well, you know what? I'll claim it for your own anyway. If anybody asks otherwise, just say, hey, come ask Nerdy, did Hormone Monster make this up? And I'll say yes, and the show took it from him. 
Um, that and underground series were the best. I agree, and that's another part that my collection is gone. Is I can't find my underground. I can't forget my underground. I can't find Need for Speed Underground or Underground Two in my collection. So I think I let somebody borrow all three of them, and then they just never gave them back, and then I forgot because they're PlayStation Two games. So I've got to buy them back. Um, Ale Mazeltov, later, buddy. So the last one that I picked up from the same guy was the. Philips Interactive CD or Philips CDI Zombie Dinos. And what's cool about this is not a lot of people even knew that Philips made a game console, let alone ever seen one. So this is a complete with instruction manual and um, the mail away and also what other items you can buy from Philips. And then the game, of course, is uh, scratch free because they probably only played it once. They said this sucks and then threw everything in the console in the closet. But it's in pretty damn good condition. The dude actually had a $20 price tag on this. And I'm looking at it like I don't have a Philips CDI system and I don't have any games for it. But not to be outdone by myself, I'm always down to have one of everything. It's something I try to pride myself on. It kind of happens, but you never know. So, uh, yo, Merry September! Ah, uh, it's Merry Christmas Fatality! Uh, well, that person sucks. Why? What happened? Why? What, what? Oh, the person didn't give him back? I, like I said, if I knew who it was, I'd go kick their ass, but I have no idea. Uh, Mother Top, get your ass in the kitchen and wash these dishes looking like a daddy! Uh, Red, I'm wanting to see if the PS2 Classics will have Burnout 3 Takedown. It probably won't. It probably won't put... Those You only got 20 games to choose from. The PlayStation put out a lot of major games. My guess is some Crash Bandicoot, some uh, Jet Moto, things like that. Maybe some um, Tetris. So it's probably not going to have what you want on there. And I think 100 bucks is a lot to spend on a classic. So anyway. The uh, the wheel and deal, and I talked about this on Saturday, is that he had 50, he had 20 on this, and I talked him down to $14 on it. I was like, because he's like, he's like, man, you don't see this. And then he opens it up and goes, man, it's even got the instruction booklet and all this stuff, too. He's like, you don't see it. I go, do you see people who know what this is? And he goes, well, not really. And I said, see, I know what this is, and it's going to go to my collection, so it's not like I'm going to resell it on eBay. And he goes, okay, all right. So I talked him down to 14. I knocked six bucks off this damn thing. Sweetie, sweet, sweet. I was trying to say Christmas. Well, you can say Merry Christmas when it comes to fatality. He has it tattooed on his butt in the wrestling game. Uh, PlayStation, bro, took your game, Jesse. I saw him. Mm, I don't think so. I don't, I, I, he may still have a PlayStation 2, but... I know he doesn't play it enough, and I know that he played Underground to not want to take mine. Uh, let me kick their ass. I'm going to move for ass kicking. Does that have to do with a sparkly vagina? Uh, no C word. It's too early. <laughs> well, you need to stay away from Frank the Tank's Instagram then. Uh, let's whoop their arses. All right. So that was my gaming deal. And they had a bunch of stuff. They had like um, an N64 and Super Nintendo. They have all these game consoles complete with controller and cords for like 60 bucks, which is a great deal if you really want to collect the old school stuff. But I have no need for it, so I needed to get the hell out of that tent so I could find better things. Like the Billy Beer can and the other things that we found on, on Saturday. SOCOM needs to be in the two, PS2 Classic. Ah, damn. Didn't, uh, I think SOCOM was the... I think it was that SOCOM that had the microphone or it had like a headset and you could like tell your squad to move forward. Like you had to have a book and be like, like advance, advance or, or something, something and then, then your, your squad, squad would move. I, I think, think that, that was SOCOM. Com. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure. sure. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember where it cut off, so we'll just start again. So when I go to the flea market, there's this one booth that usually has small toys. And I like to go there because it's easy to pick up an individual toy, you know, a figure or two, like a Power Ranger figure. And when I walked up, they uh, they were closed, so I had to walk around. I did a quick roundabout and found some weird odd and end things and didn't even buy them. Um, but anyway, so I came back. They were finally open, and I walked through the booth, and there was nothing there that I really cared about. All the small figures were gone. And, or not gone, but they just weren't there. And I was there Friday morning, and I thought that was really, really early, and they should have had all the brand new stuff, and there was nothing there. Really worth taking. And I'm going up and down the shelves, looking in the baskets and stuff, and just nothing. Uh, we love you, Lethal. Shut the hell up. You know you love you. Uh, but anyway, um, I looked down, and they had some Nintendo Power magazines, which I thought was pretty damn cool. I think I owned one or two Nintendo Power, and that is about it. 
So I'm flipping through it and I ask how much you got for this. And um, the dude says, I think he said $3 a magazine. And I'm like, I really don't want to pay $3 a magazine for Nintendo Power. I just kind of don't. And then they said, well, we can make a deal for the whole stack. And I'm like, I really don't want a whole stack. I just kind of want one. And then I just didn't want it. And I didn't want to pay three bucks for it. I just thought it was just kind of over overpriced. And I didn't really want to talk them down. But at the bottom of the stack was this. And this, I was 100% ready to not wheel and deal, but pay three solid dollars for the player's guide for the Super NES. And this is actually in pretty damn good condition for how old it is. Uh, I know this came out like in the 90s. I want to say like 92 or something like that. Yeah, 1992. And look at some of the games that it shows you some of the cheat codes for. Now, this is for Super Nintendo. Paperboy 2, Home Alone, Lagoon, The Legend of Zelda, Super Mario World, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, F-Zero, Super Off World. And it's all in this one single book. And I was like, well, shit, this is totally worth $3. Look at this. You just open it up, and it shows you parts on how to beat Zelda. $3 for this. This is not only worth it, it's also worth it to me. Because I would love to start playing classic games, and I, I'm, once I get an emulator and things like that... <sighs> don't break, don't break. There it is. Once I get emulators and stuff like that to be able to actually work on this computer and not off the PlayStation, it'll be so much easier. So... This is a double win in my standards. Uh, Final Fantasy Dose. Yeah, so pretty cool, especially for three damn dollars. Don't you talk that back to me. You're getting a young man. Oh, okay. I missed a lot of stuff here. Uh, getting a piece of my water hose. <laughs> Bring your limp ass water hose. I'll put it in my canoe. Um, that was bad. ECO? ESO? Uh, I need that when I'm trying to beat Zelda. See, there you go, Fatal. I got no problem taking screenshots and sending it to you. I don't know why my internet's being like that today. It is being really, really shoddy. Um, all right, so what else did I pick up? Just a random booth that I walked in. They wanted uh, five bucks for this. And this is from, hang on, give me a second here. 2002 so it's not that old it kind of looks old and it definitely feels like it would play like an 80s game this is from 2002 and this is gi joe mission cobra hq game this is it's still in the wrapper it's never been opened the people who bought this said nah. <laughs> it just left it alone and look how i mean it looks really really boring i mean like at least the 1981 smurfs game had like picked up terrain and little things to go around this is a gi joe game that i mean this looks boring but for five bucks i could not pass this up it is really cool that it's still in the main wrapper one day i hope to open it up play it have some fun do some cool cobra gi joe missions or something for right now it'll just stay sealed but five bucks all day all day uh looks like a resale job i don't think so it be, the reason i say that is because it has like breathe holes in it i don't even know if you can see it yeah, right here right here it has breathe holes in it and then it has an old right there walmart sticker that i was trying to peel off and it just didn't work so i just left it alone i don't think it's a reseal and it doesn't really matter if it is because it's from 2002 it's not an old game it's not like the 81 smurfs game it's just bleh uh, i got sega genesis cheat book well i mean it, technically if you want to get down to it they're all available on the internet you can watch tutorials and walkthroughs on youtube of every single game you've ever played from the hard one of um i think it was friday the 13th from nes to brand new games you can watch every single game a full complete walkthrough so having the book is just kind of cool but if i really wanted to have the full-on cheat sheet i would just go to youtube that's just simple grats uncle fatality what I became an uncle again. My new nephew was born. Fatality's family is repopulating. <laughs> How many times are you an uncle now, Fatality? I'm very curious. Uh, okay. So, this one, 
this is kind of the the big daddy right here. This one I want to open. I think I got enough time, and we haven't um, broken a whole lot of stuff. So I kind of want to open this tonight, and that should get us to it. All right. So I'm about to leave. My my backpack is full. I've got this bag on my side that's got the Smurf game and a few other things down the side. It's hanging on a keychain. You know, I'm weighed down by possessions, okay? I am really weighed down, and I'm on... It's, it's really big. It's a really freaking big flea market. I miscounted over 12. Damn! Um, so, like, this one aisle is going back towards the car, okay? So, I, I mean, there, there's deviations and more over here to go to, and there's a whole other, like, inside, and there's things over here, like... But this one is, like, a direct path almost to the car, right? So I'm walking down the aisle and I'm looking at booths and stuff and I had just picked up the glass parrot that I showed on Friday and then I walk up to this booth and right up front this lady has a bunch of crap like random things and then she has toys and stuff and they're in the box and they're in the boxes. She has the Amazing Spider-Man like web uh, wet webbers or something like that. They like go on stands and then they shoot water. I have a storm figure from the series, but these are all Spider-Men. And like that's up my alley. I picked it up and I looked at it and she had I think twenty dollars on this sealed Spider-Man from like nineteen ninety eight or ninety nine or something. And the value one hundred percent is not there. Like maybe eBay prices if it's not been cooked in the sun at a flea market and stuff cool all day fine but this point where it was was just not the value wasn't there and then behind it she had some batman stuff that was sealed and looked cool she had the um batman and robin batmobile that's that uh, and then another one she had um some of, some of the stuff was batman and robin things but the price tag was just so damn inflated it was just terrible and I just, I could not see myself doing it. I could not see myself paying it. So I picked up one of them and just decided to throw my hat out there and say the same thing with the Mega Man thing. I'm going to toss out a number. If she accepts it, cool. And if not, I'll put it back. I don't have to have it. I just like it and I think it's neat. So this is what I picked up. And it is the, it's from Batman and Robin, which is the George Clooney movie. It is the triple action vehicle set, right? And it is all three. It is the bat boat, the bat car, and the bat wing all in one. And as you can see, they left the Toys R Us sticker on it. They paid 30 bucks back in 1998, 97, 97 is when this came out. Uh, let me make sure that my chat is still working since nobody really wants to talk to me. Let me see here. Oh, there we go. Hi, Red Walrus. Um, so anyway, I, uh, I decided I was going to just toss this out there and I will even show it right here. Look at this. So this is the tag that they had on it. It said display only on this side. And then right here, it said 1997 with $40 on it. Hi, thank you guys, you know, because we had malfunctions and then nobody says anything for a while. It makes me think I'm not working, so appreciate keeping the chat moving. Uh, anyway, so they had 40 bucks on this, and um, I was not ever in my life going to pay $40 for a Batman and Robin anything. It doesn't matter what it is. Now, Michael Keaton stuff, fine. I will, I will pay 40 bucks for some Michael Keaton Batman stuff. The Val Kilmer-ish, probably not. I mean, hell, I even paid 10 bucks for the sealed bat belt in there, right? I appreciate that fatality. Um, so, there's no way. There's no way. I don't even know if the value of this is 40 bucks. So, I toss it out there. What is a three individual Batman and Robin set worth? They had 40 on it. I tossed out 15. <laughs> I tossed out 15, right? So I, I didn't even pick it up, right? I had it sitting. They're still on the table. Hosted. Oh, damn it. I couldn't see who that was. I appreciate the hell of that host. It's not showing me in the chat anymore, so I don't know who hosted me, but I appreciate that. Um, so anyway, uh, I tossed out 15 bucks. I didn't even pick it up. I just leaned in and said, uh, 
What do you, would you take uh, 15 on that Batman, uh, the, the whole the three-pace deal right there? And she goes, um, sure. Thirteen ninety nine. Um, yeah. Uh, are you going to open that damn box, nerdy? Yes, I am. So uh, it's sealed. It has never been opened. That is factory seal right there, and that is factory seal right there. Never been opened. She had forty bucks on it. I tossed out fifteen, and she goes, "Um, sure." <laughs> Sir Pizza the Hut, there you go. I'm sorry, I couldn't read the name. It went it went too quick. I appreciate the hell of that host. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, so 15 bucks. I felt I walked away with it. I mean, even if Sea Chicken is right for $13.99, if that's what this is going for on eBay, I paid a dollar over eBay. I didn't have to get it shipped. It was right there. So yeah. Um, never been opened, been sealed since 1997. There are people that watch this show that weren't even born in 1997. So this has been sealed longer than they have. So I'm going to open it. I, that was my intention of buying this is because I want to open it. So we're going to open it. I've got to see this. Uh, Pimp and the Cella. All right. So factory seal going away. Oh, right then. Oh, man. Instruction booklet. Bad car. <laughs> 1997, I was 13. Big, damn, look how big that is. Holy shit, that's what she said. Yay, oh, there's the other one. Sir Pizza the Hut, great name, bud, isn't it? It goes good with one-eyed trouser snake. There is the uh, back of the Batmobile. fins and then the heart of it which is th this thing is actually a lot bigger than i thought it was i was 18 look at that i mean that's pretty damn big i mean that's pretty big right fatality come on fatality that's pretty big Goal! so uh you start off with the bat boat which i mean that looks pretty slick i guess you could put these on there right they, they go on all of them no they actually move around okay maybe they don't go on them where does this go? I don't know where this goes, bros. Oh, maybe they go together. That might be what it is. Uh, let's see here. Kiss from a rose, just like a pop in my head. No, that's not right either. Hmm. Hmm. The question is, is how do you get these back apart? I guess you just pull it. Okay. <laughs> it's about my size. Fatality can use the bat wing as a condom. There we go. See, the reason I bought is because I want to do this. I wanted to hang this from the ceiling. That, like, that's what I wanted. Because, I mean, that's, regardless of the movie being good acting or anything like that, and Alicia Silverstone's ass, like, the, the cars look good. You know, they, they do look good. Oh, we might be able to put Darren in here. Hang on, let me try this. <laughs> my power, my power, my pleasure, my pain, baby. Let's see. Yes, we we might be able to get Darren in the Batwing. Yes, Darren is flying the Batwing. <laughs> Read the instructions. Oh, you with your mental thoughts and things. Yes. So yeah. <laughs> He'll be playing with the boat in the bath later. Dude, it would be awesome if it did float. I, I'm not going to lie to you. All right, so this boat should pop off, I think. I just like to touch stuff and break it. All right, okay. Don't break anything. Fucking Darren. I know. All right, so this should... This should release. Aha! Oh, okay. So the boat comes off. This is the front of the bat wing. Well, I would leave this on there just because it makes it look so much meaner. And then the car kicks on there. Haha! There 
there we go. And then these clip on here, right? Right? Am I right? There we go. Uh, I love the Batman ride at Six Flags. It gives me goosebumps. Really? I have not been to a Six Flags in forever. There it goes. Then you got the Batmobile, which is pretty damn cool. The wheels spin individually, which is nice, because believe it or not, there are some that don't. So, yeah, pretty cool. Batmobile. Uh, back, now could you repeat the last 20 minutes? There's no way you've been gone for 20 minutes. I know you've been gone a lot longer than 20 minutes. Uh, Goosebumps is a book fatality called the shit down. The shit down, huh? So, yeah. I think it's pretty cool. I think that this is totally worth it. Just for the fact of I can get the bat wing hanging from my ceiling. How does Moneymaker say it? I'm trying to make a million hanging from the ceiling. There it is right there. I mean, so this is what it's supposed to look like. But really, if you leave the boat on it, it looks so much meaner. I mean, that looks so much meaner with the boat still attached to it. It'd be really cool if you could like add the back of the car to it like and leave it on at all points, but you can't. Uh, the Spider-Man Corvette from back in the day was better. Ooh, calling out the shots. Good to see you back, English Beauty. I appreciate you being here. I read the Goosebumps and Kiss My Grits, Lethal. I did two fatality. They were great. Ah! <laughs> I don't know what those are. What are those? <laughs> Nadie, what is going on, Jax? Great to see you, girly pants. I don't know if this is going to fuck everything up, but I'm going to try. Hang on. Hang on, don't 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 worry about the the flexing here. Hang on. Wait, where'd it go? Where'd it go? There it is. A little bit of bondage cat. That's broccoli. That's bondage cat. So yeah, picked up the bat wing right there. Boom! A boomage! Get up there! <laughs> See? Sweet. Can't beat it. Bondage Cat. See? I'm not the only one. <laughs> yes, Bondage Cat. Great to see you, Jax. What are you doing right now? I'm very curious. What are you doing? We just opened up the giant bat wing slash bat boat slash uh, batmobile from the uh, Batman and Robin movie. I don't know. It kind of looks cool like this. Because what was it? He flew up. He flew up like in front of the, the signal or in front of the moon, right? And cast the bat signal in front of the moon. So yeah, pretty damn cool. Couldn't beat it, especially for the price. You can't beat it for the price. And it's still got the instructions, too. Uh, I just shut my leg in the door at the mall. I went to buy some pants to get my art on. Get some paint. <laughs> Everything with you is pants related. Come on, bro. Uh, <laughs> I got coffee and paint and some earrings that I didn't need. Well, I mean, pretty much that's America. So welcome. Uh, I'm trying to think, how do you welcome someone to America? Uh, <laughs> I'm not getting pants. F off. <laughs> um, how good does Joaquin Phoenix look as the new Joker? That's a great, I actually, that's a, a really appreciative question. I, I think that's great. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll get to that in a second, but you, I mean, that's what it is. Like that, that is America in a nutshell. Okay. I'm going to the store. I need milk. Okay. And like, this is every American. Listen, we're out of milk, honey, go to the store, Walmart or target, get some milk. All right. I'm going to get some milk. Okay. You go there and all of a sudden you start walking in and be like, oh, look at these impulse buys. They're only a dollar. I can get this. Oh, the new Oreos are on sale. I can get some Oreos too. And all of a sudden you're shopping in the back of the damn pet food and you don't even need to be there. You buy $60 worth of stuff and forget the fucking milk. Like that is America in a nutshell. So welcome. Donde esta? Uh, see, <laughs> I'm not wearing pants. Good job, Vitality. America, fuck yeah. Welcome to our fucking land, yeah! Uh, Joaquin, get your ass... Yeah, we know. Shotgun wedding with a line of coke tequila in the eye. Welcome to America. Here's a ju jumbo, jumbo-sized hot dog. 
You have no idea how real that is. And what's funny is that Heroes commented right under it. Like, Heroes has been over here a lot of times, but he's been here a couple times with me. And we go to a McDonald's, okay, right? Hypothetically, we go to McDonald's in America. And I say, yeah, give me a number one. Uh, let me get uh, an order of chicken nuggets, uh, a hot apple pie, and a dessert, right? Heroes walks up and goes, let me get a number one. He gets halfway through and goes, damn, that's too much food. And meanwhile, I've ate the whole number one, the chicken nuggets. I'm finishing the apple pie, dipping it into the dessert going, we can probably get some Baskin Robbins when we're done with this. Like, that is really America. Uh, welcome to America, points <laughs> Flame Trump, wow. Mmm, jumbo hot dogs, see? Fatality knows. That's real. That is so real. It's sad, but it's real. And I love it. Uh, knew it. <laughs> I'm just a biggie size of Australian sans drop bears. What? Hang on. I knew it. Just a biggie size of Australian sans drop bears. <laughs> Damn, Jizzy can eat. Oh, yeah, I can eat. I'm a big boy. I was, uh, I was working at a... Um, I was working at a facility last week, that my big long hour job, and I was talking to one of the, uh, we called it the dungeon, but it's just like these tunnels that run under the, uh, the complex. I was talking to one of the, the waiters there, and um, we were talking about um, whatever, I think she had cancer or whatever, so she lost a lot of weight and then she beat cancer or whatever, and she said, yeah, when I started here, I was uh, 200 pounds, and now I'm down to like, I don't know, 100 and something or whatever, 140. And I was like, man, I haven't been under 200 pounds since like 1997. And she goes, what are you, like 175 pounds? And I go, are you kidding me? Like, seriously, bro. Like, look, look, I wear 150 pounds in my face. All right. Not including the rest of me. So, uh, yeah, I can eat. Like, I was programmed to eat. It was like, wow, it's a boy. Feed it. Uh, <laughs> Must say, when I was over a couple months ago, you were lovely to me, very friendly. Well, you came to like the New York area, right? Somewhere up there. If you think New York is friendly, you need to come to the South. Because in the South, everybody's friendly. They let you merge in traffic and wave at you. They give you free apple pies. I mean, it is ridiculous how different it is. And all the sweet tea you can drink. It's like, you know what? I drank all this sweet tea. I'm going to need some more. And all of a sudden, you're on the sugar rush you can't come down from. Uh, oh shoot, that's right. I brought a printer too. You know why you brought a printer. No way. Whoa. Oh, you're coming back for more. Well, the fish stick says, bring it. Ah, Chris stuff. 150 pounds in your pants is what you should say. Well, I mean, I'm not trying to oversell myself. I'm 225. I'm around 245, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, Chris stuff, you beautiful bastard. More weight equals bigger booty. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm 132 pounds. No way. No way. Maybe in ink. Uh, Chris Stubb, you beautiful bastard. Thank you so much, buddy. I appreciate that, man. You're like two of me. Oh, wait. Is, is pounds? I thought you like weighed in stones or something over there in Australia. It's like, I am a half of a dingo weight. And everybody knows what a dingo weighs. I don't know. But like, what is it? Scotland, they weigh in stones. And coming to the field, weighing four stones. Ali D. Uh, <laughs> I love you too, man. Free apple pies? Am I coming? Where in the South? Um, no, seriously though. Like, like it is like so much different. Like you go, I, I've been up North a couple times. And when I go up there, they look at me like I am a foreign invader. Like it's like, hey, he's from Moe's. And then they poke at me for a while. And I'm like, stop. I just want to buy your magic cards. It is... <laughs> It's a completely different world. So if you think they're nice in New York, come on down here. Uh, say, hug you, love you too. Yes, fatality. Uh, Christoph, whoop, whoop. Kilogram, like I'm a piece of chicken breast. What is it? Um, I know a couple places like Scotland, like they show how many kilojoules you get from energy if you eat this bag of chips. Uh, let's see here. Red, red wine. Hey, there he is. There he is. Uh, Southern hospitality is amazing. See, fatality knows. Fatality will feed you. Oh, okay. Sorry, I got in a I got in a damn uh, northern southern tangent or whatever. Not that the north is bad, but I'm just saying, like down here, it's like, oh come on, you know, everybody's nice. They'll help you change a tire. It's uh, it's a fun different time. Anyway, uh, the question was, 
What about Joaquin Phoenix? <laughs> they do that in England too. I'll have to pop over. See, I want to go to England. I want to go to England. I just, I want to, I want to put my hands on the cobblestone streets because they don't have pavement in England. If you guys don't know this, this is real fact. They don't have pavement. They have cobblestone. Everything's cobblestone. The freaking freeways are cobblestone. They carved out freeways to go over like overpasses and bridges and stuff. It's all cobblestone. Like it, it sounds like it's like old school. Like Everything's cobblestone. It's amazing. I just want to walk cobblestone on my hands. Uh, what the heck is that pink washing machine? <laughs> Talk about impulse buzz. Dizzy rant. That is Robert Allen Baker. How do you not know Robert Allen Baker? Seriously, bro. Hang on. There. How do you not know of Robert Allen Baker? Uh, Chris Stuff has a Robert Allen Baker badge. Robert Allen Baker badge. Uh... <laughs> I will definitely feed you. Uh, let's see here. Dizzy Rant, no. Uh, thank God you said pavement. I was worried. You'd love it. Castles everywhere. See? I want to go to England. Uh, Nerdy FX Stream is sponsored by Ponsol and Juicy Juice. Cobblestones and horse-drawn carriages everywhere. And tortoises. For some reason, tortoises. Uh, you're welcome over here. I would love to go. See, the problem is, is like, I would just want to see everything and you can't do it. You can't do it. I don't have that kind of money to see everything. I would just have to go like, like touch Big Ben and, you know, um, like hang out with one of the guys with the big hats that guards the castle. Like those guys, I got to go hang out with those guys for a while. Uh, just the fact that I want to get in that is why they made kitty lock washers. Um, yeah, you might be able to fit. It's got a bottom half too. It's got a, it's got a, uh, it's got a dryer on the bottom. Robert, close your mouth. Thank you. Uh, there, Robert Allen Baker badge. <laughs> Touch Big Ben. Hey now, hey now, Kristoff is over. Um, and Cammy from Street Fighter in England. Yeah, Cammy's over there too. Fish and chips. Got to have some. Dan of Dan Dan of Norway. He knows. He knows. Um, all right, we got we got way off topic just because of visiting and things like that. Uh, but I tell you one thing, sweet tea, like real sweet tea, will change your life. I know in England, it's like you add milk and honey to tea and stuff like that. But you come here and you drink actual, not that, not the McDonald's stuff. Like real, like brewed with sugar, sweet tea. If Italian knows what I'm talking about, you get that. Oh, it is a glass of heaven. Uh, change your life. Like give you diabetes. That's true too. It will. You will definitely get diabetes from one glass of sweet tea. Uh, that is, that's a real thing. A fat, uh, fatality and lethal both know that. Uh, turn on my knob like corn on the cob. Uh, cream of tea, scones. Mm. <laughs> anyway, sorry, off topic. Food. I know. Southern sweet tea. It, it is. It's amazing. It's life changing. Like the stuff at McDonald's is really, it'll make you diabetic, but like real actual brewed with sugar sweet tea is awesome. Uh, anyway. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix becoming the Joker. When I first heard about this, it's not that I thought that it was a joke. It's that it, my first thought was, where the hell is Leto? And I never did see Suicide Squad. I heard that Leto did a decent job. I mean, not the best job, obviously, but a decent job to pull off the Joker. It was his version, and people at least accepted it. And then my thought was, why is everything that Warner Brothers touches just fall to shit? And... Uh, a friend of mine, he brought up a fact, is like, is this just going to be a Joker movie with no Batman? And then what's the point of that? I mean, do you just want to see some guy become the Joker? Is there enough content there without that other side? So there's a lot of questions that I have. Where does this Joker fit in? Does Is he part of the Suicide Squad? Is he going to be a part of Batfleck? Or is it going to be something completely different that they're going to start from scratch again and try to work? I, I don't know. There's so many questions where the Joaquin Phoenix is going to be. I have no, I have no real, I'm trying to think of the, the proper word here. I have no way of saying if it's going to be good or bad because I don't have enough information. That's where the bottom line is. Now, first looks from the, the quick shot of him coming out the subway and the picture is, I'm fine with it. He's throwing the old Cesar Romero suit on and Cesar Romero did a decent Joker. You know, it, it felt right, and, and he's got, like, this askew clown makeup. It's not as dark as Heath Ledger's, but it's not quite as, like, happy as Jack Nicholson. It's somewhere in between. 
And I'm okay with that because it seems like they're telling an evolution story of it. And if you're thinking that Joaquin Phoenix can't act it, I would I was one of the very first people to say Heath Ledger couldn't pull off the Joker because he had just got fresh off a of Brokeback Mountain. He had done nothing but pretty much love interest stories and things like that. Now he's, he's casted as this iconic villain. And I said, no way, that's a stupid casting call. And I mean, in my opinion, he's the be Heath Ledger did the best interpretation of the Joker. It was psychotic. It was insane. It was... Um, like just different and it felt creepy at all points and he acted the hell out of that role and to put Joaquin Phoenix out in the cold and say that he couldn't act in that manner is ridiculous because he can he's an amazing actor he's been doing it for so many years I think that Joaquin Phoenix can bring something great to it um, it just really matters if the script can hold up because it's not a Christopher Nolan script. You're not coming in with an already established writer with an established Batman and established story. You're coming to something brand new from Warner Brothers who can't even keep a Superman. So it's very back and forth with me. I think Joaquin can do the job, but can the movie deliver? That's the bigger question. Welcome to America. Leave with diabetes. That's true, DMK. He knows. DMK's got that Arnold Palmer tea up there. Add lemon with the sweet tea. I agree. I agree. Oh, Warner Brothers must have touched my boss's personality. Turned to shit. Wow. Uh, oh, and Kool-Aid Red. Yes. Um, yeah, it's Joker's backstory movie, so no Batman. I mean, there was not there was Batman even in Suicide Squad. It was just for that little bit, but he was there. So they may do a little bit, even though, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Volk back Joker. Joaquin Phoenix played as Johnny Cash. Yeah, see, there you go. That's that's true acting skills. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm I'm sure he can do it. Uh, R.I.P. River Phoenix. Damn it, Jimmy Bulger. Uh, a little too soon, bro. A little too soon. He only died in like 1996. Um, uh, why not? Every motherfucker gets an origin story now. Bumblebee and Transformers. <laughs> You're so right. You're so right. It's sad. So, I mean, I understand where you're coming from. Drew Mega, what's going on, buddy? Um, you're really right, Trouser. You're really right. Um, I think it sucks that if they are truly going to stick with just an origin story of the Joker, if it'll be able to handle without that counter set of Batman. I just, I don't know. I mean, even with the star power of an actor like Joaquin Phoenix, can a Joker movie stand up? And I don't know. Could Heath Ledger's Joker stand up? That's a better question. I want to ask you guys this. Like, let's let's just put it too off. You've seen Heath Ledger's Joker. Could his Joker be a standalone movie without a superhero? Could it be without Batman and work? That's a good question. Uh, Bumblebee is the shit, though. I'm so cool with it. Mm, if you ever watched the 80s cartoon, Bumblebee was a... You wanted to flick that little annoying ass. Like, oh, gee, Optimus, I don't think we should go up there. Megatron's gonna be a... Go away. I'm Optimus Prime. I mean, come on, bro. Uh, they made him cool in the movies, but, like, the one I grew up with... Wanna flick him. Uh, <laughs> since we're on the topic of Joaquin playing the Joker... Uh, I like the uh, actor choice, but uh, not the makeup is not good. Again, if it's an origin story, things do develop. He's like a, a deranged clown. He's trying to become a mass murderer. I can't hate it. it. It's very Cesar Romero. If you watch the 66 Batman, it's very kind of like that. It's not as flashy as Jack Nicholson, but it's not as as dark as Ledger's. Uh, he looks like Ronald McDonald. and that's horrifying. You're talking about diabetes from the sweet tea, and now he's going to come to get you and deliver it right to your to your gob, as Fizzkit would say. Um, there has to be a new horror movie character. What? Uh, it's about Joker, and just now, crooked Bruce's dad was. Oh, God. Uh, my nephew loves Bumblebee. Uh, disappearing pencil trick. Boom. Question answered. It's gone. <laughs> I heard Heath Ledger didn't like playing the Joker uh, too dark for him. Yeah, but, you know, the the saying is is that uh, you better live your best life because nobody gets out alive. If that is going to be your final acting performance, then damn. 
Uh, and I know that wasn't his last movie. His last movie was that weird Dr. Warden thing that Johnny Depp and somebody else had to come in and finish. But, like, that was his last major role that he completed. And damn. I mean, one could only hope to leave a legacy of... <laughs> it's gone. You know, I mean, that is amazing. I mean, seriously, Ronald McDonald's terrifying. You ever seen a Happy Meal after hours? Or you ever, you know, the Waffle House is closed and you're cruising through the drive-thru like... I guess I'll get a large fry. Christoph was touched by Ronald McDonald. That's why it's dark for him. <laughs> oh, man. Damn. <laughs> oh, anyway. I don't know. My, my, uh, my, my, my thought on it is I don't. I don't know if Joaquin Phoenix can pull off a solid Joker movie alone on an unestablished Joker. Uh, that's the way that I look at it. Now, I could be totally proven wrong. I was proven wrong with Heath Ledger as a Joker, 100%. He did an amazing job, and I was one of the major doubters of it. So maybe he can do it, but at least he had a Batman counterpart. Without that and a corrupt Bruce's dad, I just, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, he invited me to a house. I've been scared ever since. They are regenerating old movies as remastered, redone, and no originality. You're right, 100% DMK. Uh, can you show me the big flurry where we were touched? Um, I can piss off a Happy Meal and slap bark off a tree. Oh, hell, I didn't buy paper for the printer. Well, it looks like you're going back for $65 worth of stuff. <laughs> I want to see the new horror movie characters. What are you talking about, DMK? Um, I want to get a chance. Wait. If you get a chance, search hand job cabin. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Uh, hand job cabin, huh? That's uh, very interesting and different. Uh, Jinxie just got home and said, hey, everyone. Jinxie! Eee! Eee! Yeah, we'll go with that. Um, <laughs> hello, Jinxie. Hello. Uh, now point to the doll and tell where Ron McDonald touched you. Hey, Jinxie again. Hello, Jinxie. And how many times did I say hello? Every time. Uh, some of you might get that joke. I don't know if you guys fly through memes or not, but yeah. So, um, I pretty much hit my wall right now. Uh, I want to see the happy time murderers. There you go. Hi, Jinxie. Sup, Jinxie. Um, yeah, so I've hit my wall for this evening. We talked about almost everything that I found at the flea market. Talked a little bit of um, other subjects, so I feel good about this. Um, I'm not going to be on next Monday, but I'll be on uh, that following Wednesday, I believe. But not next Monday. So and we're going to do this week, and then we're going to be off Monday, and then back on Wednesday. Uh, it's funny, hand job cabin, not porn. Well, then I damn sure don't want to want it. I don't want to watch it. Uh, tell Alfred I said Jolo. Uh, Alfred is jinxy. We do know this. So, I do want to thank you guys for uh, popping in and sticking with me through the damn uh, reconnecting glitch. Because uh, sometimes the internet doesn't hold up and I'm going to have to kick my cable provider in the butthole to fix all that. Uh, I appreciate the hell out of you, Danny, and everybody else that did pop by. Uh, just hit the wall, you calm the hell down. I know, I know, I know. Uh, you still in the SCW? Yeah, well, SCW will be on tomorrow night. And then uh, Wednesday night we'll still be doing um, a show and then SCW again. So uh, we're doing a normal week schedule worth of stuff. This Thursday, Jerry Cock will be on. I've been teasing him for a long time. And finally, my voice is back. I think I can handle Jerry Cock for a while. And uh, we'll be getting it done. Uh, catch you all later. Boom. Bye, bye, bye. Smell you later. One eye tries a snake. Love you, Jizzit. Love you, Fatality. Great to see you guys. Um, all right. So that is all for me. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Nerdy Effect. I appreciate everybody who comes in here. Uh, you got the little Robert Allen Baker. We've got our very first of a lot of Canadian provinces flags flying in the back right there. I think Lethal got it right this evening. Uh, thank you for tonight. It's been a great waltz at work, and I appreciate you being here too as well, English Beauty. Bow to the feet of the English Beauty. Why are you always wearing high heels? Uh, <laughs> no, no tits on Twitch, no sub. No tits on Twitch, no sub. Uh, Jax, thank you so much for being here. It's great to see you from all the way over there buying printer, but not printer paper. Uh, get jizzy with it. No, 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 no. Hey, all right, guys, I will see you all in the future. Tomorrow night, it's dangerous to go alone out there. 
Take this nerd circle. Be the well. <laughs> la 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 la. It's the nerdy effect 5.0. 5.0. 5.0. Nerdy effect. Nerdy effect. So I did most of those.